Hi friends, I'm Matt. And I'm Luke. And we are in isolation. Yay! Hi friends, I'm Matt. And I'm Luke. And we are doing a couples Q&A. Yay! This is your first video, isn't it? I know. Are you nervous? Um, a little bit. <laughs> to help us pass the time and hopefully you guys as well, um, we decided to put a call out for questions for a couples Q&A. And these are your questions. And we're going to ask for them. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, how did you cuties meet? Um, am I going? Yeah. So we met in Sydney. Um, did I say? Yeah. In a meeting. What kind um, of meeting? In a meeting for really dysfunctional people. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> for um, recovering alcoholics. Alcoholic. Yeah. yeah. So um, I just moved to Sydney and from the UK and I came to a meeting and yeah, I met Matt there. I was there. And didn't think much of him, to no. be honest. We didn't really, we weren't on each other's radars, were we? No. No. Well, yeah, times were very different. Yeah. Yeah. They were. So that's how we met. Yeah. How long were you together before getting engaged? Like seven months? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty quick. Yeah. I definitely thought it was quick. I remember there being lots of articles about it being like Matthew Mitchum with boyfriend of six months. But hey, when you know, you know. Yep, it was a whirlwind. It was obviously meant to be though, because we went through with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Marry. Firstly, congratulations. Thank you. Are you planning to settle in one country now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are. No, we're not planning to settle in two countries. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> Um, we are in Australia now, and that's where we plan to spend the rest of our lives with, obviously, frequent visits back to the UK, because yeah. we've still got lots of family back there. And I think we decided that, you know, now we're married, and, you know, the things that we want for our future, that we feel like we can have a better quality of life in Australia. So, yeah, I was very happy to move to Australia. Sad to leave my family mm -hmm. and my friends but happy to come back to Australia. Yeah, me too. All right, um, getting married in July, postponed from March, any advice? Ooh. Any advice, postponed. Okay. Just enjoy the time before you're married. That's the one bit of advice that I would give to anyone getting married because it's such a crazy time planning a wedding and um, it can really pass you by and it's like you're only gonna get this one time hopefully forever in your life so just enjoy it and um, yeah and make the most of the process because it can be really fun yeah and also yeah like just watch, uh, watch lots of other wedding videos and you know think oh yeah confetti didn't think about confetti or you know sparklers oh that's a really cute idea and um, yeah all those little extras kind of really just make the day really really special Do you, <laughs> do you have any weird couple habits? Any weird couple habits? Yeah. I mean, what about our going to bed routine? Yeah, we have a going to bed routine. I mean, majority of the time. That's pretty weird. What's weird? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm a picker, um, and I just find it really satisfying to like just get any tiny little little tiny little white spots um, on Luke's back. Yeah, and for Christmas I gave. This is so gross. It's not. No, honestly, I, so many people are going to be able to relate to this. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, he grooms me. Let's yeah. say my back. Um, so that's like a bedtime <laughs> habit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good one to say. Yeah, I think so too. What is the most annoying thing about you two to each other? <laughs> you can go first. What annoys me about you? 
Oh, when you talk from the other room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, Jesus. <laughs> and he does it all the time. And you say, what? And then he says it at exactly the same volume. Does not change a thing. And you're like, I can't hear you. And if you want to speak to me, then come to me. Matt, you can literally be sounding like three meters across the room and I'll be talking directly facing you. No, he doesn't though, he faces the opposite way. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I have been known to do that as well. And what is the most annoying thing that I do? There are so many. Uh, I literally have like, I could reel off so many. Most annoying habit, which is like a daily struggle for me, (laughs) is Matt's eating. But that's not a habit, it's just like, yeah. Can I finish what I'm saying? Sure. Thank you. Go for it. Matt is very, and yeah, Matt is very noisy eater. He likes to squelch his food and he's a big, he's a very loud eater. And I really, really struggle with it. So, if there's like no music or the TV's not on or there's no background noise. We I couldn't we can't fit next to each other, can we? Like you have to be like somewhere else eating because yeah, you're so noisy. Mm-hmm. And it really just So this isn't him issue. Annoys me. Because nobody else has ever complained about the sound of me eating. So it's it's a him issue. Why did you choose Belgium as the location for your wedding ceremony? Um, we chose Belgium because, um, I mean, I did all my high school in French, so, um, uh, and, and Luke's grandparents, um, have a house in France, so, you know, we've both grown up with a lot of French culture, we both love French food. Yeah, I suddenly kind of, much <laughs> Matt initially wanted a very small wedding in the park, yeah. so when I told him the idea of having a wedding in the chateau, he was, um, a little bit taken aback but we went to see it not well probably like a month after we got engaged Mm -hmm. the chateau and yeah just instantly fell in love with it and knew it was going to be the place for us we'd never been to belgium before we didn't know anything about belgium but like the you know before it was on the cusp it's on the cusp of france where the chateau is and it was just the right place for us wasn't it yeah how did you know he was the one you wanted to marry matthew um, so the reason I like, okay, the moment I fell in love with him, I was in a meeting, it was like a year after we'd met and I was doing this reading and he walked in late and he was wearing this low cut singlet with all of his chest hair just hanging out. And I just stopped mid reading, like just watching him walk in and everybody else in the meeting started laughing because they could see exactly what was happening. And I was in such denial about it, um, but yeah, no, that was definitely the moment I fell in love with you. Um, What did you guys do on your first date? Our first official date was, we went to a pasta restaurant in Newtown. There may have been a reason. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, squid ink pasta, that's right. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah? Um, yeah, Would you say that's our first date? I remember being like, this is our like, first official like, we can be out in public together, mm-hmm. like dating. Mm. Mm. Um, so what we ate, basically. Um, that's that's what we did on our first date. We ate and other stuff. On on the date? <laughs> well, it depends on how long we date after. <laughs> <laughs> um, at what age did you know you were gay? I'm still trying to figure things out for myself. I'm 16, by the way. Um, so I knew that I liked boys from a very very young age. Um, but I was reluctant to, like, make that exclusive until I um, was 18 and I was in a very long-term relationship with a man. So, um, I guess that's when I, like, put an official kind of, like, gay label on it. Um, but I, yeah, I knew that I liked boys from a very young age. I also always kind of liked boys, um, but, you know, didn't really know that there was a label for it. I guess until I went to secondary school and it became a thing and you know, I would get asked if I was gay a lot. Um, 
And so yeah, that, I, I guess that's when I like knew I was gay, and I came out at school, high school, and um, so I was fifteen when no, yeah, fifteen when I came out, and yeah, it was like the best thing I ever did. I was very lucky to know that I was gay from a early age and to have a really supportive um, family and friend group that have always been very accepting. Isn't that funny? We had the same experience. Like owning it was the most freeing, freeing thing. Yeah. yeah. But each to their own and everybody needs to come out in their own time and whatever yeah. they feel comfortable with. Don't, you know, uh, don't get stressed out um, about putting a label on it or, or, or trying to figure yourself out um, and feeling like there's a deadline for it because there's not. Um, just call yourself whatever you feel comfortable with doing. Okay, interested to know what each of you thinks is the other's best attribute, not necessarily physical. Uh, Matt's best attribute is his kindness. So he's always... Um, <laughs> He always sees everything in a positive light and yeah, it just makes people feel at ease and very kind, generous and giving. It's just your nature, isn't it? To mm. be like, he always thinks the best of somebody and I'm like completely the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> so we balance each other out. So Matt is very, yeah, you are, you, you're kind natured. Mm. Um, what I like about you is how um, pragmatic and proactive you are like you're just you're a doer you are just so like goal focused goal oriented like you do things like regardless <laughs> of whether I'm yeah you're a doer <laughs> you do things regardless of whether I'm digging heels or not like you just you know just drag me along for the ride um, is that a good thing? yeah okay yeah because I'm because I'm always like I live my life in fear so you help me to uh, to, to, I guess, I don't know, you just basically yank me through the fear and then I end up having incredible experiences which I never would have had if I had been by myself. <laughs> and I, yeah, I find that very attractive. Aww. Yeah. Love you. Love you too. Okay. Um, can Luke play table tennis? He can, and yeah. we do. I'm pretty good. Not as good as Matt, but pretty good. They play this weirdo game and it's, what's it called? Around the world. Sing Pong. Oh yeah, Sing Pong. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid, honestly. You explain that. Oh, okay, Sting Pong. So basically you're playing ping pong with somebody and if a person loses the shot, then the winner gets to <gasps> basically smack a ping pong ball into the other person's back as hard as they can. And, and this thing leaves like... Welts. Yeah, yeah and it's... It seems so unnecessary to me. Completely so I refuse to play, play it, but I do have a video footage of it, so we will put that in this video somewhere. Yeah. What were your first impressions of each other when you first met? Do we answer that already? Underwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Matt was really weird. Yeah. So uh, I, was, I, was um, I just thought he was very, he was very like, I don't know, he came and sat down next to me one time, we were in a meeting, and it was just awkward, I felt, and then like, yeah, and then I remember you walking, I was walking home, and you walked past was me, it awkward and you were just, he's just socially awkward. Well, he thinks I was awkward because he's not used to people not like gushing all over him. No, that's not it. <laughs> you were just socially awkward. Yeah, I didn't show him that much interest at all. I wasn't interested in socialising. No. <laughs> um, so what's your advice for new relationships? I'm in my first at 30 years old, three months in, and sharing the same space. Any do's and don'ts? Communicate. Just like, yeah. really open, um, share all of your things that you love, but also all of the things that you don't like. Um, you know, because if you just like hold it in, speaking from personal experience, if you don't share all of the things that like annoy the crap out of you or that like really upset you, then you start building up all of these resentments and um, and then they start coming out sideways and it's really toxic. So yeah. just communicate. Communication is key. Yeah. Is starting a family in your future plan? Yeah. It never was before. I've always been 
anti-children. Yeah. And to be honest, though, I feel like, not anti-children, but definitely didn't see it children in my future mm -hmm. up until about late 20s. When Ellie started having her kids? No, after that, like, no, if anything, that put me off having children. <laughs> But, no, not that there's anything wrong with her children, but seeing, I love them, but seeing like how hard work it is yeah. and it's lovely to go in and be the, an uncle, but then it's also lovely to leave and say, there's your child back. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and also my lifestyle just didn't, you know, has never really kind of matched up with having children. But yeah, definitely now at the point, for the last couple of years, I've been at the point of, I can see that in our future. Mm. We talk about it a lot, don't we? Yeah, <clears throat> I was always, not anti-children, it's not like I hate children, um, but I had always said that if I do ever have children that I want to adopt because there are already so many children in the world that need homes, um, so yeah, so why not give a child in need of a home a home? Um, so I want to adopt. How are you adjusting to living in Australia again? Me? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's great. I mean, it's very different. I'm currently living with Matt's parents. Um, so it's definitely not what I had imagined for the first few months of our married life. But luckily Matt's family are gorgeous and I love them and they make it very easy to be living with them. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to be back. Um, I was sad to leave England because mm -hmm. we like rushed to England because of all the coronavirus stuff. Like you didn't, didn't get a chance to say goodbye, did you? No, to my friends or my family. Um, we literally packed up our whole flat in two days and jumped on a plane before they closed the borders in Australia. So yeah, so I am happy to be back. I love Australia um, and yeah, can't wait for you know, isolation to be over so we can kind of enjoy the country. Okay, um, so we've just found, um, because I put these across different, we both put these across all of our channels and I just found all the Facebook questions and there are some really good ones. So this definitely constitutes a part two. So thank you for being here uh, for your questions so far and um, hope you enjoyed them, you're satisfied. Okay. If you like it, Click like, subscribe. If you don't like it, keep your opinions to yourself. And um, we love you. Bye. Hi, everyone. I want to say something. Okay, fine. Don't cut me off. You always want that. the last word. No, I don't want the last word, but I'll, I also want to say that. Hope everyone is staying safe at this challenging time and finding ways to keep yourself entertained and sane. And yeah, just thinking about everyone out there and looking forward to, you know, the world going back to normal and us all being able to be out there and be with our loved ones. And yeah, hope this brings a slight bit of entertainment to your day. Yeah, that was a beautiful ending. Uh -huh. Love you. Bye. Love you too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>